Chapter 14, The Prospectors. When Jack awoke the next morning, he threw off his blanket and rushed outside to see if their burrow was still there. It was, tied to a stake outside the tent. Good morning, Stubb, Jack smiled. Stubb was a veteran of the gold diggings. He gave Jack a haughty look. Stubb's a proud animal, the man had said when they bought him. Sometimes he thinks he's a mule. The burrow's head seemed almost as large as his hind quarters, and his dark ears stood up like the wings of a hawk. Jack liked him. We're going to be friends, he said. Yes, sir. He untied the burrow and threw a leg over his back. Stubb kicked out his hind legs. His tail flew and Jack hit the dirt. The burrow turned his thick neck and peered at Jack with disdain. Jack was so surprised he just sat there. That wasn't very friendly, said Jack. Pitch Pine Billy, standing in the opening of his dusty tent, roared out laughing. You heard what the man said, Jamoka Jack. He said that mountain canary thinks he's a mule. Jack brushed himself off. All I wanted was, a, was to ride him. Pitch Pine Billy pulled a red bandana out of his pocket and came over. The mules in these hills is still half wild. He tied the handkerchief around Stubb's eyes. They don't take kindly to being packed animals. You blindfold them first and they'll stand still. Praiseworthy came out of the tent and stretched and sat on a stump to watch. Daylight was filtering through the trees and the mornings had a fresh piney smell. Jack walked around the burrow, sizing him up. Then he spit in his hand and threw a leg over Stubb's back and held on. Ready, said Pitch Pine Billy. Ready, said Jack. Pitch Pine Billy pulled off the bandana. Jack braced himself. Stubb stood for a moment as if trying to make up his mind whether to act like a mule or a burrow. Good boy, Stubb, Jack said tentatively. The burrow flagged his ears and seemed satisfied that he had been shown the proper respect. He gave a little kick just to get it out of his system and behaved himself. Jack walked him up and back until breakfast was ready and slipped to the ground. We got ourselves a good burrow, he called to Praiseworthy. Stubb gave a kick as if in protest. Mule, I mean, Jack corrected himself. After breakfast, they struck the tent, blindfolded Stubb, and cinched the wood and pack saddle to his back. They loaded up their grub and supplies, slipped their pick and shovel through the pack ropes, and were ready to leave. Jimmy from town came over with Buffalo John, both still wearing their neckties from the night before. Pitch Pine Billy gazed out over the diggings. Hangtown just won't be the same without a lady in it. Goodbye, Jets, Praiseworthy said. I've got, I've a good mind to leave with you, scowled Pitch Pine Billy. Other miners came over and it took five minutes to get their goodbye said. We'll be looking for you back come the middle of next month, said Buffalo John. You and the Mountain Ox. I'll be here, Praiseworthy said, taking the blindfold off Stubb's face. Let's get going, partner. Praiseworthy picked up their new squirrel gun and Jack took Stubb's rope. The squirrel gun wasn't what Jack had in mind, like a four shooter, but it will it would do. They'd be able to hunt a little game, and he supposed it would stand off an outlaw or two if they met up with any. In jack boots and red shirts, they began walking upstream, and soon the farewell shouts of their friends were lost in the trees. It was a fine morning to be going prospecting. But Jack found it hard to walk away from Pitch Pine Billy and Jimmy from town and even Buffalo John. Still coming back would be even harder. Maybe the mountain ox isn't as big as terrible as they say he is, Jack murmured. Worse, no doubt, said Praiseworthy. He sounded positively lighthearted. Are you really going to come back and fight him? I gave my word, didn't I? Bare knuckle? Absolutely. Praiseworthy was not pleased that he had won his name and reputation because he had swung on a road agent with a weighted glove. Jack kept a grip on Stubbs' rope, and the animal followed with the clanging of drinking cups, coffee pot, gold pans, and empty tin cans. Jack had a sudden vision of his partner lying in the dust of the street, beaten and humiliated. Most of the miners are, are betting on the mountain ox, he muttered. Praiseworthy scratched through his whiskers. I know that, but I intend to beat him. With reading and writing? 
Exactly. Praiseworthy pushed the slouch hat back on his head. Miss Arabella once asked me to destroy a book she found in your grandfather's library. If I remember correctly, it was called The Gentleman's Book of Boxing or The Fine Art of Fisticuffs, explained and illustrated. She was afraid it might fall into your hands, I suppose. I don't mind telling you that I didn't destroy it. I read it. I devoured it. Fascinating. I believe I could recite whole pages to you. Now it stands to reason that the mountain ox has never read a book in his life. He's no doubt a mere brawler. Therefore, since I have outread him, I see no reason why I cannot outwit and outbox him. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm beginning to look forward to it. The two partners exchanged a glance and a smile and continued on their way. Jack put the mountain ox out of his mind. Do you want to carry our gun? said Praiseworthy. I'd like to carry our gun, said Jack. He took it in the crook of his arm while Praiseworthy led the burrow and kept an eye out for rabbits, squirrels, savages, and outlaws. All they had to do now was find pay dirt.